Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have a topic from Dental Anatomy that is the details of maxillary second molar. So recently I was doing the part two subjects but uh, I was getting a repeated request from one of my student uh, to do videos on maxillary and mandibular uh, second and third molars because their exams are approaching. So I thought to uh, finish the dental anatomy uh, of maxillary and mandibular second and third molars. So we'll start with uh, our numbering system. So the new universal numbering system is as we all know, it will be two and 15 because it starts with uh, one and okay so we have one here we have eight then nine sixteen so it's very easy to uh, understand because each quadrant will be having eight teeth so since it's second molar it will be next to the first and next to the last okay so in universal system the numbers are 2 and 15 then the Palmer notation that is the Zygmunti Palmer system I mentioned it here 7 and 7 this is the second molar on upper right and upper left then the FTA system that is the two digit system we have 1 7 and 2 7 this indicates the quadrant, this indicates the tooth number. So after that we have uh, chronology. In chronology, uh, the common sets of criteria that is the first evidence of calcification by 2.5 years. Then enamel will be completed by 7 to 8 years but eruption is around 12 to 13 years this is eruption okay erupting into the oral cavity but this is enamel completion okay there is a difference between enamel completion and eruption so this is first evidence of calcification so all the minerals calcification sorry minerals are getting deposited into the our heart tissues that is by 2.5 years this is enamel completed by 7 to 8 years and eruption by 12 to 13 years and root completion by 14 to 16 years so you can make out there is continuous root completion even after the eruption though it erupts around 12 to 13 years the root completion is not complete its apex won't be properly closed but around 14 to 16 years the growth of maxillary second molar will be complete that is a growth of roots the apex closure now we have the dimension that is uh, the cervical occlusal length is 7 millimeter then the length of root that is buccal and lingual always the palatal we should call it as palatal palatal root is always lengthier that is around 12 millimeter and 11 millimeter then uh, the mesiodistal diameter of crown is 9 and the mesiodistal diameter of crown at cervix is 7 because there will be a constriction at the cervix and um, buccopalatal diameter of crown is 11 that is buccopalatal diameter of crown is 11 the same at cervix is 10 and curvature line of mesial is 1 and distal is 0 because always mesial will be more curved in most of the teeth 
so this is the dimensions okay so dimensions of our maxillary second molar so some peculiar factors about maxillary second molar that this, this tooth supplements the maxillary first molar in function because it is almost same in dimension so it supplements a uh, major uh, mastication that is major chewing happens in the molar area so it supplements maxillary first molar and it has the same uh, form with little bit of variation from uh, maxillary first molar the size is little less but uh, most of the features are same so it supplements in function okay it supplements in function because each set of teeth has different different functions the incisors has a different function canines has different function so the molars are mostly having our chewing the major chewing is happening in the molar area so the second molar supplements maxillary first molar in function and regarding the proximal contact area proximal contact area are both in the same level at the middle third okay at the middle third both are at same level most of the cases it will be somewhat cervical in one side but this is at same level at middle third on both side and there is no cusp of carabelli here okay the cusp of carabelli is absent in maxillary second molar which is present only in maxillary first molar this is absent okay now let's start with uh, each surface the first one is uh, buccal aspect so the crown is little shorter cervical occlusally as you see the image here around by 0.5 millimeter and narrow mesio distally by around 1 millimeter but of the same measurement bucco paratally okay and the buccal groove is located further distally okay you can see it is it is located towards the distal side with which is resulting in a larger mesial buccal cusp if it is placed towards the mesial side the distal buccal cusp will be larger but in this case it is placed more distally so the mesial buccal cusp is larger and longer and a shorter and sharper distal buccal cusp so the occlusal outline on the buccal surface is tilted cervically from mesial to distal so you can see a small tilt in the picture so this makes the buccal surface of the crown appears to be shorter on the distal side than the mesial side because it is a, a tilting towards the distal side. So the three roots of the maxillary second molars are smaller, less divergent and more parallel in comparison with first molar. First molar roots are more divergent. It is more like uh, diverging from one point. But in second molar cases, they are comparatively smaller also and less divergent and more like parallel, not much diverging from one point. This is more like parallel. And the palatal root is still the longest one and the largest one, but is more straighter and less curved buccally. Okay. Less curved buccally because there is a buccal curvature of the palatal root with regard to the maxillary first molar but in this case the palatal root is still the largest and longest but the curvature towards the buccal side is less prominent and there is a great chance for the fusion of the two buccal roots or even the fusion of the three roots okay so the high chances of fusion Mostly it will be between mesiobuccal and distobuccal, sometimes all the three roots, palatal roots. So extraction of the maxillary second molar is more easier than the maxillary first molar because most of the times the roots are either it is uh, parallel or sometimes fused. So extraction is easier compared to maxillary first molar because the maxillary first molar roots are more divergent, longer, larger roots. It's not parallel. The palatal root has got a buccal curvature. 
and the buccal roots are about the same length so you can see the mesial buccal and distal buccal roots are of same length uh, they are more nearly parallel and are inclined distally more than uh, those of maxillary for smaller so that the end of the distal buccal root is slightly distal to the distal extremity of the crown you can see the distal extremity the crown is like this but the root is slightly distal okay if you draw a line this tip of the root is slightly distal not within the outline of crown it is slightly distal to the distal extremity of the crown so the apex of the mesiobuccal root is on in line with the buccal groove of the crown instead of the tip of the mesiobuccal cusp as found on the maxillary first molar so you can see the mesiobuccal root in case of maxillary first molar it is in line with the mesiobuccal cusp but in this case it is in line with the buccal groove of the crown okay buccal groove of the crown in maxillary first molar it is more towards the mesiobuccal cusp now we have the uh, next surface that is a palatal uh, aspect in palatal aspect the mesiopalatal cusp which is smaller and not well developed as in maxillary for smaller and there is no fifth cusp that is a uh, cusp of carabelli is absent here then the apex of the palatal root is in line with the disto palatal cusp instead of the palatal groove which was found in the maxillary for smaller so in maxillary for smaller maxillary for smaller this apex of the palatal root is in line with palatal groove okay whereas in maxillary second molar the pa palatal root is in line with the disto palatal cusp that is our second molar so that is a difference so i repeat in first molar that is a maxillary first molar our palatal root is in line with the palatal groove whereas in second molar the palatal root is in line with disto palatal cusp now we have the next aspect that is mesial aspect when you are studying molars always study first molar second molar third molar in the same day or in same time because it's very easy when you combinedly study all the molars because most of the features are same only a little bit of difference here and there so if you are studying uh, first molar today then you are studying canine and after two days you are studying maxillary second molar uh, it's very difficult so if you are studying first and second molar on the same time or same day it will be very easy to understand because uh, always uh, compare and study okay moving on we have mesial aspect so the bucco palatal dimension is about the same as that of maxillary for smaller the roots do not spread as for uh, bucco palatally and it is being within the confines of bucco palatal crown outline so you can see the bucco palatal crown outline so this roots is not uh, getting spread bucco palatal it is within the uh, outline of crown Uh, whereas uh, distal aspect, distal aspect uh, because of this distal buccal cusp is smaller than the uh, one which is present in the maxillary for smaller. More of the mesial buccal cusp may be seen from this angle because the distal buccal cusp is smaller, so you can see the mesial buccal cusp from this side. and the apex of the palatal root is in line with the distal palatal cusp and now we have the last one that is a occlusal aspect so occlusal aspect the crown is more constricted in mesial distal dimension uh, there are two major types of crown form one is a uh, rhomboidal one is rhomboidal type and second one is heart shaped 
okay heart shape so there are two forms of outline a crucial aspect one is rhomboidal shape second one is a heart shape so rhomboidal type resembling the maxillary first molar it is the most frequent and is similar to the first molar except that the rhomboid form is more accentuated okay whereas the heart shape form uh, which resembles the maxillary third molar because the distal uh, palatal cusp being poorly developed so that is why this will become a heart shape because of distal palatal cusp is poorly developed so you can see the pictures you can uh, clearly make out two forms and it is common to find uh, supplemental grooves on the occlusal surface of maxillary second molar which uh, makes the surface more wrinkled okay so that was all about maxillary second molar so next video i'll do on maxillary third molar so it will be a smaller video because most of the features will be same and uh, less prominent in maxillary third molars uh, so uh, whenever you write uh, any question in dental anatomy the picture uh, carries the half of the mark if it is a question for 10 marks the picture has 5 marks if you write all content without any picture you won't get more than 5 marks because a picture is a must without picture uh, it's very difficult to understand because uh, who is uh, reading your paper the first thing uh, what he or she notices is your picture so pictures is a must in dental anatomy any question some questions uh, might not need a picture but most of the time you need to have a picture with your answers so okay i'll come up with maxillary third molar in next session thank you